I'm happy to see that my experiences from part 1 got some attention. I wasn't expecting this stuff really to get any traction. I'm mainly here to vent and have a place to catalog the stuff that happens around my house. People also seem to enjoy the part where the naked dude attacked me and then cartwheeled into the woods crying like a baby when I stabbed him. I'm still not sure he was human. Now I feel obligated to tell more about my experiences. Also, feel free to leave any questions you have and I will try to answer them in the next post. That being said, if you haven't read part 1, I suggest you go back now and read it. I'm going to tell the following experiences as if you already know about the other experiences I've written about on having this property. This place is not normal after all, and takes some getting used to. Now that the intro is out of the way, I think we could start with Camo, and Camo is a fucking nuisance. The first time I came into contact with him was during the first white-tailed deer season I had on my property. Now, I'm a hunter, but the program that is helping me after the incident said I wasn't allowed to have guns because the noise draws too much attention. Bullshit. I live in the middle of nowhere and there isn't anybody else for miles unless you count the chosen, but I'm pretty sure that the program is worried about them. Luckily, the lady in the tree hooked me up with the 45 caliber I now have in my possession, but I didn't have it upon first meeting Camo, unfortunately. Anyway, back to my story. I first saw him when I was walking towards a ladder stand I had set up on a tree to watch deer, since I could no longer kill them. And yes, I could have used a bow, but I'm shit with a bow, and I would risk hurting the animal. I, I don't like the idea of an animal that is suffering because I couldn't make a shot that would kill it instantly. Now, as I approach my stand, I notice a figure already sitting in it. It's about the size of a regular human. I mean, he was dressed in full camouflage, pants, jackets, boots, hat, face mask, and a backpack. He actually seemed like a regular person, which I hadn't seen in any of these parts of the woods for the entirety of the four months that I've been living there. The things that live on this property are generally more extreme. But no matter how relieved I was to see a proper human for once, he was deep in my property and hunting in my stand, I had to make him leave. I reluctantly shouted over to him, Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Time to go, dude. Now, I was about 75 yards away and to his left, but I yelled plenty loud for him to hear me clearly. He didn't flinch. He stayed facing straight forward like a statue. What a prick. Look, try to be creepy all you want, but ignoring someone like that is just rude. I know he hears me. I have reason to believe that he was just trying to freak me out because I've made him break character before. So after I yell, and he ignores me, I start getting impatient. I yelled the same thing at him again, a little louder, and still ended up with the same response. What a dick. Now, I'm livid, because he's making me ruin all my chances of seeing deer this afternoon by making me yell at him. So naturally, I start a brisk stroll over to him just to tell him to his face, or maybe kick his ass. I already noticed he didn't have a rifle, so I just assumed that he was watching like I was planning on doing. Of course, he could have had a concealed handgun, but now I'm a dumbass, so I didn't consider that. Then I heard this crunch of something under my foot, and the sudden sound of rope sliding across the surface at high speed. I froze for a fraction of a second, and before I could squawk out, Ah, shit! I'm hanging upside down from my ankle. There was a loop around my leg that held me suspended seven feet off the ground like a damn cartoon. I was like a fucking Looney Tunes character. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. I immediately knew it was camo, and when I looked up, well, or down. Shit, I was upside down, so I don't really know where I had to look, but I saw him slowly climbing down the ladder. Like, really slowly. What a dramatic guy. If he wasn't so obsessed with appearances, he probably could have killed me. That's what I think he wanted to do anyways. There was a machete on his hip that I could now see, and the blade was chipped at in a way that made it look like it was serrated. Wouldn't have been a very useful tool unless you wanted to, well, use it to inflict pain. I think the biggest flaw with Camo's trap though was that he didn't account for the single fact that 99% of the people who live alone in the woods tend to carry a large knife at all times. I mean, it's a necessary thing if you want to stay alive. I wish I could tell you that I did a flip after I cut myself down and landed on my feet like some sort of badass. But I didn't. I landed on the back of my neck and my vision went dark for 15 seconds. Which I guess was enough time for Twiddle Dumbass to finally get to the bottom of my ladder stand. As I stood up, I saw that he was standing completely still at the base of my ladder stand. Still 50 yards away from me, just staring at me. I could hear his thoughts from here. Damn, why did he get out? Shit, shit, shit. And then he turned and bolted. The dude was booking. I mean, I lost sight of him in less than 30 seconds into my chase and I had to give up. I need to jog more. And what more, by the time that I got to the ladder stand, it was already dark. I didn't even get a chance to watch my deer. I've seen Camo on multiple other occasions as well, but I've figured him out. He got me the first time, but his traps really aren't that sneaky. They are elaborate, but not sneaky. He always appears in an area that I plan on hunting in. I don't know how he knows where I'm going to be, but I've stopped questioning stuff on this land a long time ago. And I always noticed him long before I get to the location. Again, I have no idea how he plans this shit out. And secondly, there is always this trap set somewhere directly between where I first spot him and his actual location. 
Like, if I were to draw a line from him to where I see him from, and the trap, there's always going to be a line. Also, another important thing to realize is that none of his traps are fatal. They are all meant to keep me from escaping, but not kill me. They do hurt, though. One time, I almost stepped in a bear trap he had set out, and it for sure would have broken my leg and had it got me. And this non-fatal part was his downfall. I figured out that he didn't want me to die in his trap. He probably wanted to do the deed himself. Or maybe do something else, but really didn't want me to be dead in his trap. So all I had to do to get him riled up was die in a trap, right? After the lady in the tree hooked me up with the pistol a little over a year and a half ago, one of the first problems I wanted to solve with it was the creator of the various nets, ankle snares, and holes that attempted to contain me many times before. And I knew exactly how I was going to do it. One of Camo's recurring traps was just a large 11 foot deep hole covered by a large amount of suspiciously patterned sticks and leaves that could literally be seen from 100 yards away. I just had to wait until he used this trap again. After a swinging log that I think was supposed to knock me out, and another net that was meant to land on top of me, I might add that it was made of wire so I couldn't cut through it, but it also gave off a glare from the sunlight that made it impossible not to see. I finally came across the trap I was looking for. Four weeks after I got the gun, I found myself walking towards an 11 foot hole trying to pretend that I didn't see it. Suddenly, I start falling. I was ready for the fall and let out a loud yell as I traveled downwards. As I hit the ground, I stayed as quiet as possible which is hard considering the broken toe and dislocated knee I had just received. Fuck Camo for making me do this. I army crawl over to the side of the hole and I laid my head against the side of it to make it look like I had broken my neck. And then I waited. It took 15 minutes for that little prick to dramatically walk his way over to me, but I heard him walk up to the edge of the hole. I obviously had to close my eyes to appear dead because I didn't want to run a risk of blinking, but I almost smiled when I heard Camo mutter to himself, Oh shit, no, 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 they're gonna be so fucking pissed! I took advantage of the moment and quickly opened my eyes and whipped out the pistol, firing three shots at him as quickly as I could. I missed all but with one. The bullet that met its mark put a hole in Camo's shoulder and he let out a garbled scrape of nonsense and gibberish. Something along the lines of, You fucking piece of shit! You can't believe that ass you fucking sh ah! He did end up running away, but as he ran, I heard him say, Fuck this dude! I, I'm shit! I'm fucking done! I was laughing my ass off, till I realized I was seriously injured and had to climb out of this hole. Good thing it was daytime though, or I might not have noticed the black rope that Camel had lowered into the hole while he was cursing himself for killing me. I somehow managed to pop my knee back in a joint based on shit that I had seen earlier in life and climbed out to limp my way back to the house. That was a good day. Broken toes are fucking expensive to get treated though. The best part is that I haven't seen Camel since that day. It actually worked. Shit, I wish I could pull something like that off with Skinny. Another thing I guess I need to explain to all of you readers is the lady in the tree. I've mentioned her a few times now, and at least some of you are probably wondering about her. I honestly don't know much about her myself, but she is hands down the best thing on this property. My first experience with her was when she healed a broken eardrum that I had suffered when meeting with what I think was a banshee down in the creek. It was busted when she screeched really loud, and when I went to sleep, I woke up perfectly fine the next morning. I almost thought it was all a dream until I saw blood still on the pillow and the broken flashlight that I had used in personal defense. I guess this was the first time she affected me directly, but not the first time she had helped me out. The true first time I didn't realize was her until last night, and it was the gun. The gun that I talked about purchasing in part one wasn't really purchased. I just wasn't willing to admit that I looted it off an old corpse that I had found in an abandoned log cabin in the back of the property. This is an example of how sneaky she is. I only started to wonder if it was her doing while I was recording the first set of these stories, and I started thinking about how good of a shape the gun was in. Of course, it was a little dirty when I found it, but it was also in perfect operating condition, and I figured that the skeleton that clutched it didn't need it anymore, but hell, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if he came to life every night. Either way, I left the cabin with a new sidearm and two boxes of ammunition. I didn't really think about it much because finding a gun on a body is pretty mild considering the events that go down here on a week-to-week -week basis. But yesterday, I started questioning the real origins of this gun. It was so well maintained and new feeling when I got it, but the skeleton looked like it had been there forever. Not to mention the fact that the gun was unloaded and the box of ammo was unopened, but the skeleton looked like it had died holding the gun like he was intended to use it. It didn't add up, so I headed back to the cabin and I found my answer. Everything was the same when I got there as it had been over a year ago. I mean, nothing had changed, especially not the body. The exact same as before. I was nervous at first, I mean not because the body scared me, but because the joke about the skeleton coming back to life from earlier wasn't really that far-fetched in this place. 
I've never seen an undead skeleton, but I have seen other forms of undead. Maybe I'll tell you all about those experiences sometimes. Nervous or not though, I had to confirm my suspicions. I approached the body and started examining the clothes. Just like I expected, the flannel shirt and brown jeans had no tags. Not like they had been ripped out, but like they were just never there to begin with. Now, there was only one more thing to check. I took out my knife and scraped the blade down the skeleton's exposed arm bone. Sure enough, a shaving fell off of it. It was wood. The entire skeleton was made of wood, and painted a lightish brown among other discolorations to look like the real deal. The lady in the tree is very talented when it comes to wood, but she can also do so much more. I've only seen her in person two times. Once when I caught a glimpse of her smiling as she walked into an opening into a tree only to close the opening when a door that fits so perfectly I couldn't see the edges when I walked up to it. It just looked like a normal tree. And a second time two days after I encountered the screeching banshee in the creek. I saw her outside the window of my front door smiling in. She winked at me and ducked out of view. I ran to the door to try to see her fully but by the time I swung the door open she was gone in the night. Nowhere to be seen. Which is really annoying. I would almost consider her as friends by now and she still won't show herself to me. Now, when I saw her for the second time, I didn't know what or who she was, but when I looked at the ground in defeat, I noticed it a small sheet of what looked like homemade paper. On it was a short message that read, I wish to congratulate on killing the Keelet. He was bringing an evil over the land that was distressing this forest. I don't know how you actually ended him, but I am happy all the same. I have seen you roaming, and I am certain you have seen me. We work towards the same goal, cleansing the land. My vows as a medicine woman keeps me from directly interfering with the creatures of this land, but I wish you luck on your mission, and will support you from the shadows as best I can. I hope your ear feels better. So I think the keelet she was talking about me killing was a rabid coyote that I had killed a few days before the creek incident. It was hairless and just stared at me through some trees. I think it was trying to intimidate me to leave its territory, so I shot it between the eyes. My territory, bitch. But this was the first time that I realized that I finally had someone on my side on the land, and that was a relief. She was actually really helpful. Once I got bitten by a rattlesnake, and when I got home, there was a bottle labeled anti-venom sitting on my kitchen table. Another time, I got bit by one of the shadow children while I was out hiking, and when I got home, there was a bottle of purple liquid and a glass vial in the same place on the table. I honestly expected to heal the wounds or something, but it just made me really drunk. <laughs> Guess she couldn't help me that time. She's done other stuff too, but now I'm kind of worried about her. I haven't heard or experienced any help from her in eight months. I'm worried something got to her. Or even worse, what if she is mad at me? I mean, Skinny almost killed me six months ago and she didn't do shit. I've grown to like her and even depend on her a bit, but she's just gone. I think I'll call it quits for this post, but hopefully I can stay alive long enough to post more. The hunt for Skinny continues, and if you don't know who that is, well, shame on you for not reading the first post before now. And if you do know who that is, I appreciate any suggestions you have for killing him. See y'all next time. Cole, signing off.